Tuesday, August 9th, 2022, and it's very, very hot for this part of As hot Europe. as the devil's butt? Matthew! Last week, we took you with us on our day trip to Oxford University. If you missed it, you should definitely go check it out. We had a ton of fun seeing some cool Harry Potter sites and learning all about this historical school. This week, we're wrapping up our time in the English countryside by visiting two of the most fascinating cities in the southwest of England. Bath and Bristol. These cities couldn't be more different from one another, and we really loved our time in each of them, so we hope you'll stick around. Be sure to like and subscribe, and enjoy the journey with us. We're in Bath today. This is a very beautiful place. Mom and Dad are staying at a fancy swanky hotel. Matt's parents were staying at the Royal Crescent Hotel and Spa. It was so nice for them to let us come and spend the days there too. We would definitely recommend it if it fits within your budget, so I'll create a custom booking.com link for it in the description of this video. It's a joy to travel with this young lady. Why, thank you. It just takes a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Our first stop of the day was Bath Abbey. The Abbey was originally founded as a monastery in the 7th century. However, it needed to be rebuilt after a fire in the 12th century and then again after being stripped of its precious materials and left to decay in the 16th century. Queen Elizabeth I actually helped fund the second rebuilding. You wouldn't believe how old some of the gravestones were. Mr. Harvey. Mr. French. Oh, so there's like three people. On our way back to the hotel, we found a great Italian deli for lunch and also saw another bridge of size imposter, the Nerve. We spent the evening wandering the Royal Crescent and eventually we settled down at the bar for drinks and some of the most delicious pasta dishes. How many steps are you looking at, Dad? Uh, well, let's see. Wait, yesterday, 12,000 steps. Oh, good. Nice. That's surprising. How's that? That is surprising. Oh, making those little stick legs work for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Mom really wants to see some place where old Roman dudes took baths, so that's what we're doing today. It's a jolly good day in Bath. It's Tuesday, August 9th, 2022, and it's very, very hot for this part of As hot Europe. as the devil's butt? Matthew! As you can tell, Shell wasn't exactly captivated by the audio guide, but the sights were really cool. The baths were used for public bathing. Gross. The water in the baths comes from rainfall that collects deep underground, heats up from the pressure, and rises along fissures and faults in the limestone into these baths. 
The Roman baths were originally the location of a Roman temple, built around 60 AD during the occupation of the Roman Empire in Great Britain. The baths were later used as a place of worship to the goddess Minerva. No, not a Hogwarts professor. It was crazy to see some of the artifacts they had on display in the museum, many dating back to the first few centuries AD. What did you think, Dad? Very interesting, and I'm glad we have jacuzzis today. Should have your mom give a little explanation? Mom's listening to yet another. She's listening to every single one of the stuff possible. Is she actually? Oh, look, a sign that tells you you're not supposed to touch the water. <laughs> interesting. I'm gonna touch the water. Yeah, I get a disease, and then I'll go in and get healed. <laughs> Make sure you don't slip like the guy in the photo. Are you gonna touch the water? They haven't. Have you touched the water? Is it warm? I don't know. You gotta touch it. It's warm. Dad, you're not supposed to touch the water. <laughs> <laughs> you tricked me. <laughs> Wanted something nice. <laughs> we finished up at the baths, and now we are heading to this place called Sally Lund's Bun. Well, it's called Sally Lund's Restaurant, and apparently they are known for their buns. Mmm, yum, Lund's Buns. Lund's buns. Mind your head. <laughs> Turns out we weren't really in the mood for a full lunch, and honestly, Sally Lund's was not all that it was hyped up to be. So instead, we walked along the River Avon next to the Parade Gardens. We took a detour along Pultini Bridge, and our empty stomachs would not allow us to pass this bakery. We made an impulse decision. Ooh, that was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really good, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting any. <laughs> Just your kind of place, Ian. We stopped inside St. Michael's Church, but we didn't realize it had been transformed into a coffee shop. We also found Poundland, England's dollar store. Okay, Mom, tell us all about the pump room. The pump room. Do they room pump is stuff? Really pump the tea. No. Basically, they go to the Roman baths and no. pump that hot water up into your teacup. No. <laughs> The algae water. We had a reservation for tea at the Pump Room, a historical building in the Abbey Churchyard. It's most famous for being a setting in two of Jane Austen's books, since she lived in Bath and enjoyed coming here. On a scale of one to ten, how excited are you? Ten. <laughs> Thank you.
put it in black pudding. <laughs> After that lunch tea, we could all barely walk, so we spent the evening at the hotel spa and wandering the peaceful grounds. Where are we off to today? We're going to Bristol to see the largest hot air balloon festival in Europe, which just happens to be the week that we're here. Oh well, shoot, fancy that. Who would have planned are that? Are you ready? I am sweaty and ready. Because <laughs> it is like 90 degrees. August is usually a pretty like beautiful, nice weather time for England, but this week happened to be a heat wave that they are not used to here. So having a heat we're wave. Having to deal with that. A tropical heat wave. Bristol is about an hour farther west from Bath on the River Avon. It's actually the highest populated city in southwest England. The Bristol port has led many significant sea voyages, including several of the first explorations of North America in the 1400s. Today, it's mostly known for its young demographic and street art, and it also was named Britain's best city to live in as recently as 2014 and 2017. Currently waiting for Shelby, as always. And uh, it is hot as the devil's butt. Matthew! Since we were still staying at our Airbnb in the Cotswolds, the drive to Bristol took us about an hour and a half, and there was some extra traffic from the balloon festival. So we parked in some rich old dude's lawn, and it's like a 30 minute walk to where we're going now. So, uh, you didn't have to go into town. You said that you thought that was fine. Oh, is the thing the other way? Yeah. Well, shoot. We parked right next to it. Shoot. That's why everyone was parked there. Well, shoot. You said you wanted to walk by the harbor, so we're going to the harbor. Oh, okay. I just got done talking to Jordan about backpacking, and I was like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to backpack. But can't walk. But 30 can't walk minutes 30 to the minutes into on town. A straight path, no slope. But it's so hot. We came for rain and cold weather and we got I know, we kind of did. but i think we're gonna get a little bit of that in scotland Definitely. this looks like an epic skate park this is cool i know bristol's known for its like street art and stuff so. that's super cool oh boy look at that river pretty. there's a lot of river in there it's yeah. a pretty rough river yes we're currently trying to get to those houses and we're across the river on a random road. Maybe everywhere. See, this is nice. Yeah. Okay, this place is nice. Now this is more my speed. <laughs> Just took a little bit of perseverance. See, was it worth it? I think it was. Yeah, I so too. Checking out the map. It's one of the things she's best at. Just wanted to clarify that what I meant by always checking maps doesn't mean that she's good at following maps and directions. We In were fact, so close. Uh, Shelby is notoriously bad at following directions on maps. Many times. It's one of my weaknesses. Thanks for yes. pointing it out and emphasizing it so but much. But you're really good at other things like cooking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Uh, you're wonderful. That's not a skill. <laughs> <laughs> In case you need to make a quick getaway on your boat, the misconduct. <laughs> so the seagull is like going ham. I am parched. We must look 
in search of drink. For a drink that's gonna dehydrate you. <laughs> Some more. Yes. I have exactly. water. I don't think that's what you're looking for. No. I'm looking for a good strong beer. Oh, or a spritzer. I could go a for spritz a spritz. Sounds wonderful. Well, we found ourselves a place to get a drink. And it is very toasty. So I need to get a beer in me. Well, we've now had our walk through the harbor and our drink, and are heading back to the actual festival to see some cool hot air balloons. Technically, it's a fiesta. It's called the the Bristol International Hot Air Balloon Fiesta. So we just walked across this like an hour ago. It's a pretty rough river, if you ask me. No, we literally walked across this like an hour ago, and what? now. It's completely full. What happened? They must have like flooded it or something. That's bizarre. So we followed the crowds back to the hot air balloon fiesta, not knowing what was awaiting us. What have you left me into, Shelby? <laughs> I'm very confused. I'm learning as I go as well. Oh yeah, this is our friend Camille. This is ridiculous. <laughs> There's so what? much American culture. It's, this is the greatest show. <laughs> Deflating balloons. <laughs> like my heart. <laughs> Unfortunately, it turned out that this was not the greatest show after all. We didn't realize that the balloons would only inflate and light up to the music that night, and never actually lift off. Disappointing to say the least. Hanging out with Camille was fun though. So we have to update this because we originally thought that this was going to be like a let's see really cool hot air balloons <laughs> go into the sky. All the photos online that I saw look so picturesque. They're so amazing. The like, so pretty. Nope. Nope. They did play the, uh, <laughs> the, top, gun the top Gun anthem though and that was that was pretty epic. So I got They in fact so, never left the ground. <laughs> they never left the ground. Not even a little jump. Yeah. <laughs> like just to show us they could do it. They exactly. didn't even want to show us they could do it. So, I mean, at least it was a good time and we were having a great time. But yeah, yeah Bristol, you've done us dirty. No! <laughs> Bristol, no! <laughs> Next week, we're in Scotland. <laughs> where we'll say farewell to the English countryside and continue our tour through the UK. First, we'll take you to one of the most quaint coastal towns. Then we'll venture farther north and stay at the beautiful Fairmont Hotel in St. Andrews. We'll share some more time with Ted and Carol as we explore the picturesque Scottish Highlands. We hope you'll come along with us and feel free to like and subscribe for more fun travel videos. We'll see you next week.